So now before going on to all the normal forms, let's discuss another important thing that is functional dependencies. Functional dependency. Okay. So, okay. So functional dependency is something like x to y. Value of x, value of x, value of attribute y, sorry, value of attribute y can be derived from value of attribute x. Or you can say that x derives y or y is derived from x. Y is derived by x, y is derived from x. So, functional dependence, uh, dependency is something like x to y. Value of attribute y can be derived from value of attribute x. Let's understand it with the help of an example. Let's take the student's example. Right, let's take that. So, let's uh, draw the schema. ID, name, email, then let's say batch ID I have and batch name is there. Okay, so this is the design of student's table. Now, now in the student's table, can you tell me some of you, some of the functional dependencies? Write your answers. So, the very first one which I can see is value of ID, ID to name. Can you say actually ID, value of, you know, from ID, you can actually get the name of the student. If the value of ID, ID to, so the name is something. So you can get the, because names are repeated. Maybe the two person can have the same name, but ID is different for those two persons, those two students, right? So from ID, you can get the name. Then another, from ID, you can get the email also, right? Email. Then from batch ID, you can get the batch name. Two batches can have the same name, but ID of both the batches is different. So from batch ID, you can have the batch name. Then, then email. From email, you can get ID also. Because email is also kind of unique, right? Two person, two students cannot have the same email, right? So email from email, you can yeah, get the ID. Then from email, you can get the uh, name also, right? And if you know the ID of the person, the student, you can get, get their batch ID as well. Student 2 belongs to batch ID 1, right? So these are some of the functional dependencies. So functional dependency is between in, in a particular table, between a particular table, the relationship between the two attributes, the relationship between attributes, that is functional dependencies, right? Now, let's take another example. To understand it more clearly, let's take another example. Let's take the example of mentor session in Scalar. One student is assigned a mentor, okay? From whom uh, the student can ask the curriculum, how to practice the things, how to revise, or they can have mock interviews as well, right? So, and one mentor, uh, mentor can endorse one student only, okay? So, Let's draw the schema. Let's say mentor ID I have. Then mentee ID, the student. Then uh, let's say feedback. And let's say rating. Okay. So this is the schema. Now, in this table, in this table, tell me all the functional dependencies that you can able to uh, seen that. The very first one is I can able to notice mentor ID. From mentor ID, you can get mentee ID. And vice versa is also true because one mentor can endorse one mentee, one student, and one student can be endorsed by one mentor only, right? So, yeah, then mentee ID, two mentor ID as well. Then, what are all the different? functional dependencies that you can see. Okay, one hint if I will give you, uh, one X and Y don't necessarily be one attributes. Okay, it can be multiple attributes. Now think about it. What can be the different attributes? 
कैन आई से मेंटर आईडी कॉमा मेंटी आईडी टुगेदर इट डिफाइंस फीडबैक थ्रू वन मेंटी वन मेंटोर कैन टुगेदर डिफाइंस फीडबैक वन मेंटोर कैन कैन दिस बी ट्रू वन मेंटोर आईडी डिफाइंस फीडबैक no because one mentor can give different feedbacks right but this is true one student one mentor can give one feedback and of course this is true for rating also right so these are the different functional dependencies now let's say if i add here session id as well mm, if i add here let's say here session id is also there session id session id means the different sessions that the student have with this mentor okay uh, let's say one session is on wednesday date and time is there that one session is on uh, thursday at 2 pm something like that right so then how the function dependencies change now can i say session id mentor id and mentee id together belong uh, together defines feedback right at this particular time at this mentor with this mentee this feedback is given same for rating then session id single can also give feedback at this particular time only one session is there so for that session what is the feedback what is the rating right what is the mentor id at this particular time uh, the session is taken by which mentor at one particular time at one date at one time only one session is happening right so it can defines mentee id as well so can you notice uh, what the session id is here the session id becomes the primary key of the table because this attributes defines all the other attributes of the table right so session id becomes the primary key of the table right so concept of i hope the fun concept of functional dependency is clear to you functional dependency is just say in a relationship in a table the relationship between the different attributes value of x value of y can be derived from value of x x derives y okay now the concept of functional dependencies also helps to find the candidate key of the table right if an attribute defines all other attributes uniquely defines all other attributes then that key uh, that the attribute become the candidate key of the table why not primary key because primary key can be chosen from the candidate keys right all the set of candidate key you can choose the most suitable primary key for your table right so it can helps to find the candidate key of the table as well so if one attribute defines a unique identifies the other or uh, other attributes that's the functional dependencies okay so functional dependencies helps to determine the relationship of one attribute to another in a database right and how it helps in normalization normalization basically uses functional dependencies to eliminate the possibility of all these anomalies that can occur right so and how it helps to do that uh, basically we'll see that in the second video of normalization where we'll discuss all the normal forms okay so yeah that's pretty much about this video i hope you like this video you understand all the concepts we discuss here so in the next video we'll be coming up with the normal forms of normalization till then stay connected like this video subscribe to the channel and if you have any doubts drop your queries in the comment section and you can join the discord channel as well uh, the link is in the description box and yeah stay connected thank you everyone